Today's guest is a New Jersey-based voice actor who's been a part of video games, audiobooks, visual novels, and animated series. His name is Chris Dottoli, and this is Slasher Sports Cinema. They will say that I have shed innocent blood. What's blood for, if not for shedding? We all go a little mad sometimes. God, it knows I'm here. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Slasher Sports Show with Billy Graves. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Slasher Sports Cinema. I am Billy Graves, as you heard the intro from Brittany. Um, guys, we've got a really cool guest today. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Chris Zatoli. Chris, thank hello, you for joining hello. me today. I'm doing well. How are you today, Billy? Hey, doing fantastic, man. And uh, again, thank you very much for taking your time. I know we were uh, uh, on a different schedule, but you got uh, so, some kids work you got to do. And that is yeah. number one. Yeah, that that's number uh, one never on all fronts. Those darn kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can't live with them. Can't put them on the street. Not yeah, anyway. not anymore. Yeah, as you, right. yeah, it's kind of frowned upon now, right? So yeah, it is a little, little, little bit, but uh, you know, no one's looking them, put them up, go ahead, and yell, yeah, uh, slap them around a little bit. They'll listen. They'll now, listen. you know what? I do something better. I get the Nerf gun, and I just go, "All right." You know what? It's a punishment, and it's fun. So it you're is. hitting on two fronts, right? Exactly. Well, welcome to Slasher Sports Cinema, Chris. This is uh, it's really a privilege to sit down and talk to you. Uh, you are the first of um i guess a unique skill set that i've been able to invite onto the show uh, we've had filmmakers directors producers actors um people not really even involved in film but uh writing books and today oh, a voice actor this is a I, I, it almost feels cheap to say it like that because i think you do a whole lot more than just voice acting. There's a lot to this, but there are also some misconceptions, are there not, about oh, getting into the industry? Absolutely. There's so much, uh, especially since, uh, it's a cliche to say, but since the pandemic, there's so much misinformation out there about getting started with voiceovers. You see it a lot on TikTok. You see it a lot across social media, and it just, it was going on for years before that, but, you know, it's just, my whole goal is to guide people the right way. Oh, no doubt. Everything. But, you know, surprise, surprise, right? It's like we live in an era of misinformation. Exactly. You know, yeah. Uh, so. A lot of listeners to this show would probably appreciate somebody from the field um, having not only done it for as long as you have, but been involved in a variety, a wide variety of projects. Uh, but what, what are some of those high level, I, I guess, meaning uh, surface level misconceptions about the industry? That you can get paid by buying a get paid probably about two three hundred dollars an hour by just picking up a USB mic and going online and just starting right there without no training whatsoever. That's one. The other one is oh you don't need coaching you can just make your demo yourself. And that's two. And three is uh no I would say that's probably the the big oh the third one is uh my personal favorite go on uh, a website that shall not be named but it starts as five in it and we'll take it from there <laughs> that's <safe. laughs> oh you make a you can make a hundred thousand dollars on that really okay oh of course you can if, if it was that simple i'd have a hundred thousand dollars right now in my pocket exactly yeah th listen nothing gets done without practice and you know they, they say practice makes perfect but pra perfect practice makes perfect exactly so, yeah, you, you have to work at things like this and not until you don't work at something until you get it right. You work at something until you can't get it wrong. Exactly. And, and, and I, 
Yeah. Well, cheers to that. I, I feel like in a time where we have an exposure to so many content creators, they want to make it so easy. And it feels like, you know, even if you go onto YouTube, you see these people who make content surrounding, hey, this is how you get your podcast to blow up. And they have yeah. the most simple solutions. Yeah. But and see what everyone sees, uh, so everyone sees is I call it the iceberg theory. Um, uh, everyone sees, you know, the tip of the iceberg. They see the money, they see the reward, they see the fame. What they don't see is what's underneath, like how much you had to sacrifice, how much you had to train for that. Uh, there was a time where I was actually, for a good eight months, I was unemployed. I actually quit my job and pursued voiceover for full time. Looking mm -hmm. back, it was one of the smartest and dumbest moves I've ever done because supporting a family when you don't have an income was very, very challenging. You know, I, I highly, I, I don't recommend it at all but you know it was definitely like blood went in tears and the best part is uh and also i would say no but definitely the best part is you never stop learning with voice acting or acting in general like you never stop learning different techniques you never stop getting coaching you never stop getting lessons from it and you never stop evolving because trends change all the time i mean when i was a kid the big trend in voiceover was don lafonte saying in a world that was a big trend. Now the big trend is more youthful millennial type voice. And it, you know it is wild how trends change so drastically. Well, you know, exactly. something that something that was once the thing to do in say 2005 is drastically different in say 2000, you know, 15. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's incredible. That's why you have to always stay on top of it. You always have to keep working on your craft and you always have to just keep polishing your skills. Well, I read a quote lately. Um, it may have even been today or yesterday, but you know, when you speak, you are repeating what you already know. But when you listen, you're always learning. Exactly. So, so listening to those in the industry, accepting the coach, it's not just a thing to get the coaching, to accept the coaching and exactly. know that you're going to somebody and not waving off, you know, the advice as if you already know better. I, yeah. I think that is a lot, just humbling yourself and, and asking for advice and listening to the advice. Probably, probably seven eighths of, of the solution right there. Exactly. You built, that's actually um, one of the things I uh, get great feedback on is I take direction very well. You know, sometimes, you know, obviously when I do a script, I'll read it one way and they'll say, Hey, can you, can you read it this way? I'll read it that way. Like, all right, good, good, really good. Can you try it this way? And I'll do it that way. All right. That's one of the skills I have that I'm, I'm very proud to, uh, I don't want to say brag, but to highlight on that. And if you can take direction, well, again, man, you're almost there. Well, it, if you're able to do something that you have to basically make a conscious effort to not do another thing, it's worth bragging about. If, if you know, if people that stop smoking, brag about it absolutely you know, yeah if, if you can humble yourself and listen to those who know those who've been there and those who've done it then yeah say you know what i'm a great listener <laughs> yeah <laughs> just drop the humility there brag about that i don't care but you know in, in today's in today's world with you know the hustle and bustle of just you know going non-stop you know, content creation is through the roof, but audiobooks have blown up. And, you know, mm -hmm. someone like me who really isn't a big reader as much as I'd like to be, you know, audiobooks might be the only way that I can get my favorite, you know, fiction and sometimes oh, yeah. nonfiction in. And I, it's so important to have a great narrator. And I don't know how many times I've listened to the abridged version, but The Hobbit, and it's narrated by Nicole Williamson, like the, mm -hmm. the famed British actor who is also in The Exorcist 3, if we want to bring this back to a horror thing. But, you know, he was Father Mourning in that movie, if you needed to know. But do you have any mentors or favorite voice actors who might have given you that extra motivation to get in the industry? Without a doubt, there's a couple. There's... uh Mark Hamill, he's definitely one of my uh, inspirations. You know, good old Luke Skywalker and the Joker. Uh, Mark Grau, who's a very well-known voice actor who's done hundreds of video games. Bob Bergen, who uh, is actually the voice of, currently the voice of Porky Pig. He was actually in the movie Fright Night 2. He was one of the many vampire noises in it. 
And that was actually one of the pieces of information. So when I did a class with him, I said, oh, hey, by the way, I know you. You, you were in Fright Night, too. He goes, how the hell did you know that? <laughs> you, I'm like, I'm, I'm a nerd. So You, you study your amazing. heroes is what you do. Yeah. I mean, I, I get the questions like, listen, do you how, how often do you take notes on your on your shows? And I'm like, man, listen, if I'm talking about a movie with a director that I already know, I'm just going to shoot from the hip. I mean, it's going to come yeah. off as like I'm reading. I'm not trying to read anything. I, I just told you, Chris, I don't like to read. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm, I'm going to shoot from the hip. I'm going to you know watch these films, try, try to compare them. And, you know, if you tell me that, I don't know, uh, Neil Marshall is making a film, well, I have to think about, Neil. okay, Neil Marshall, uh, that's the guy that did uh, Doomsday and he did The Descent and he did Dog Soldiers. Well, he's got a new film coming out called The Lair. And that's what, you know, pop that into mind but i immediately start thinking about th those films and what they've done and if, if he were to come to me and say how did you know i did this little project because i've read up on it neil yeah yeah you know, people are sometimes a little too humble like of course you knew he was in fright night too because like he's a badass dude right yeah. did, like doing great work so of course you're going to study up on him yeah and it's just uh and uh, a few others would be Mark Cashman, who's another fantastic voice artist, and Steve Bloom is another one. Um, and they all offer classes. So as big as they are, as busy as they are, they still offer classes and are willing to help out uh, new people. And it was just incredible how welcoming they were to uh, the industry. You know, I said, like, listen, I I'm a fan of your work. Like, hey, listen, it's not about me. It's about you. Let's just let's work on you buddy and let's get started. So it was just that that's why I, I, you know, me personally, I love working with them and those are a few of my idols. So um, who did you end up training under or, you know, getting that coaching from uh, sometimes your idols and the coaches aren't always the same person. Uh, right. One can develop into the other, but yeah. Who, who did you, uh, who, who'd you get your tutelage from? Uh, it's a, it's a couple. Uh, it was Anganguza was one Mark Rao. I uh, got coaching from. He actually produced my video game demo. Uh, Mark Cashman, Chuck Duran, Terry Daniel, David Rosenthal of the Global Voice Acting Academy, uh, Lex Lang and Sandy Fox I took a class with. Uh, oh, gosh, I'm going to be drawing a blank on her name. Uh, Doug Honoroff was one. Uh, let's see. Right, Kim Handysides, that's the one I'm thinking of. So I, I, I kind of pick, um, when I first started getting into voiceover, I actually did a tremendous amount of research. And one thing uh, one established voice actor told me was, you want to dip your toes in a variety of different coaches. Make sure they're legitimate. Make sure they've been in the industry for quite a long time. They're not a scam artist. And make sure, you know, for each demo you make, pick a coach that's specific in that field. So that's why for video games, I chose Mark Rao because he does a lot of video games. For commercial, I actually had two different coaches. One of them as actually Uncle Roy Yokelson, who's a big name in the voiceover community uh, who lives in Jersey. Uh, he produced mine. I'm making a e-learn demo with Kim Handysides. I'm going to work on character demo with David Rosenthal. And I just keep, you know, working with different coaches. Now, it's expensive. I'm not going to lie. But... I feel each coach adds a different type of theme. There's actually, I'm working on a new demo. Uh, I'm going to be uh, working with a few other coaches, actually creating creature noises. And this is all about screaming because it was just a horror game I did. Uh, and to kind of get ready for it, I had to, you know, really train my muscles to get prepared for that role, to scream, to yell, to make guttural noises, blood screams and everything. So it was a bit intensive, but it was it was a lot of fun to do. So uh, that's the newest demo I'm kind of in the progress of making right now, Creature Noises. I was going to ask you, what is your warm-up process like? I mean, you, you, Pavarotti is going to be back there, you know, gargling <laughs> salt water, doing his notes, and, you know, doing his scales, rather. Uh, what, what does a voice actor do to get ready? So every morning uh, I wake up around 5 a.m. And you piss excellence. What's that? And you piss excellence. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I gargle shark tooth, eat nails, chew wood, and jump in that booth. Uh, <laughs> like a man a glass should. Of water, at least two. Uh, then I'll do... Uh, I was in choir for uh, 
my high school years into college. So a lot of warm-ups you do for chorus or choir or glee club, they're sort of the same thing. There's another voice actor uh, and coach called Rodney Salisbury. He has great vocal warm-ups. A lot of my coaches, they gave me sheets to warm up on. Uh, a fun thing I do is I actually will take a cork, I'll put it in my mouth, and I'll pronounce my vowels over and over again until I can hear it cl uh, hear it clearly. And uh, just do those type of warm-ups. And probably the oddest one is one uh, I do tongue exercises where I'll actually stick my tongue out for 10 seconds and then put it uh, put it away and then do it again. Uh -huh. uh, I'll do kind of like about 80 to 100 times. And it's a good 20 to 40 minutes I warm up and practicing. Oh, wow. I also pick several scripts and I read that over and over again, different tongue twisters. So it should be done every day to kind of prepare you. And there's also a uh, little spray that I use that I purchased from one of my coaches that uh, it's kind of funny. It was actually made for heavy metal singers and she developed it towards voice actors as well because we do a lot of screaming. So I take that for an uh, intensive session and that works out phenomenal. See folks, the, the, there's just no way around it. Preparation is everything, no matter what you're doing, whether you're, you know, about to play in front of, you know, 70,000 at Wembley stadium, or if it's you and a microphone to I I impersonate, William Shatner. It doesn't matter. Preparation. Exactly. You, you prepare, uh, you fail to prepare, you prepare to fail. That's right. That's right. So Chris, I did download your resume because it was available. Okay. And I, I did it like I'm going to be hiring you. Right. So uh, <laughs> I, I wanted to get an idea to kind of encapsulate the world of a voice actor. And really there's just no way to encapsulate it. I see everything from video games to film audiobooks, on-air commercials for Hyatt hotels. I mean, I assume there's a lot of thinking outside of the box when it comes to landing roles or uh, maybe auditioning for roles. You're, you're not going to pigeonhole yourself into, into any one thing. No. So uh, for prepping for a role or really for getting our auditions, I do a lot of marketing. I actually spent uh, before pursuing voice acting uh, out of the many jobs I did have, uh, one of them was marketing director. So I always kind of knew how to create an email and customize it and reach out to potential clients. And uh, when it comes to warm up, a lot of the commercials that they give you like a every script you get, there's a sort of a background or breakdown that says, you know, looking someone between this age and this age an everyday cool guy, not to announce re. And that's all well and good. Uh, my favorite is when I do characters or video games or things of that nature, uh, it gives me the bit of the character and I'll practice three different voices. And when they show me a description of that character, I'll analyze it and say, okay. So for instance, there was one character I did who uh, was this big orc character almost. So he kind of had hunch over. So whenever I would, I always kept my mouth towards my mic, but I was hunched over and I'm like, all right, he sounds like he's got a big belly. So let me kind of talk like this a little bit. And you know what? He grew up in this town. So let me kind of get him a little bit lower. All right. Now, am I a smart orc or am I a dumb orc? Well, I believe I'm more of in between. So, all right. Now I'm more bloodthirsty and I'm going to destroy them. And that's kind of what I do. I kind of put my whole body into it, uh, to kind of acting. And, that, and that's really what you got to do for it. Bravo, sir. Bravo. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you know, we, we live in a time, though, like where, you know, you might find people who I, I like to call them online personalities who get offended for people who aren't offended themselves. But I find myself highly offended for you, for you, when an animated film casts its roles to establish yeah. actors who aren't, you know, they're not going to appear in the film in any way other than lending their voices. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about the new Super Mario Brothers film. Yeah. Chris Pratt, Jack Black, Anya Taylor-Joy. Does Anya Taylor-Joy even have a recognizable voice to the point where it's going <laughs> to bring in extra viewers if she's in it? I mean, why not hire voice actors? People who've dedicated to the trade. Like, am I am I overblowing this? No, no. Bottom line is the reason why they do that is for one simple reason, and that's marketing. You know, they know... Uh, Chris Pratt is going to bring in more viewers than 
Charles Martinet, who's been the voice of Mario for since Mario was created. Yeah, I could see like the the hardcore fans yeah. saying, "Oh my God, they're going to give him a a feature film. Let's go!" But the average guy like me is probably going to think, mm, "Okay, I don't know who that guy is." But I could also see maybe the lead role, the lead villain roles going to, you know, these, these larger uh, established characters, but man, you would think, I don't know that I would be able to recognize, I don't know, Idris Elba, if he were to show up as like a, a Koopa paratroopa or something, you know, yeah, right? that's just me. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm being defensive and I'll, I'll, I'll back off it. Because... No, no, it's always, uh, it, it's always a struggle. I mean, we get it. We just don't like it. Uh, you know, I feel because voice acting, uh, at least to me, is so much more difficult than on camera acting. Uh, now, I've done on camera acting as well, but because voice acting, they have to hear your smile. They have to know you have a tear in your eye without crying. They, they have to hear every emotion. So you have to learn how to you know talk with a smile in your voice. You got to know. So when you're doing an audiobook and you're playing four different characters, male and female, you have to do change up where they know the male narrator is talking and the female narrator is talking. So you have to it's a definitely a skill set. <laughs> well, where how did you acquire that skill set? Was there some kind of life experience that, you know, maybe pre um, you know, pre-education uh, that was Absolutely. most helpful to you? Uh, when I was young, uh, my father said, Chris, I guarantee when you're older, you're going to be talking to yourself in a padded room. And I'm very happy to prove him right. So uh, those curtains don't look padded. <laughs> <laughs> so it was uh, I've always done theater my whole life. Uh, I was actually many people. Perhaps you might know this, uh, that when Universal Studios was actually in Florida, when we, uh, me and my family went, me and my family went to Florida. I was actually uh, a contestant. I was supposed to be on a new show for Nickelodeon, and eventually the project got scrapped. But you know, that was kind of like my first taste into acting. Then growing up, I just did a lot of community theater, school theater, and I always wanted. I put on little shows with my family and friends of the family every night. You know, just to goof around. Then. Um, had to be eight years ago, a friend of mine introduced me to a website called Voice Acting Alliance. So I went on there. I just did a few like non-paying projects. Just so happens that an author and their publishing company heard one of my projects I was on. And she said, listen, I, I heard you. Would you mind auditioning for an audiobook version of my book? And I said, sure. I did it. And I actually got the job and it was my first really big paycheck. And when I got it, I said, okay, if I'm going to do voice acting, I have to do this right. I need coaching. I need to develop a skill set. So I took that money and I invested it into my training and it kind of built up from there. But you always have to have a passion for acting. You, you have to picture yourself is you have to imagine that you can't do anything else but this. And that passion alone is going to drive you and it's going to help you stick with it, but you're going to have to need to develop your skills. So it's if it wasn't for that passion, that. wouldn't be where I am now. It's very funny that you say that because I was just thinking about, um, it may have been a couple of days ago, who I consider, even though I've never met the guy, uh, my sales, because I used to work in sales, uh, my sales mentor, my sales guru, my sales Yoda, if you will. His name is Brian Flanagan. He's a uh, kind of an underling of Zig Ziglar, mm -hmm. um, but I bought his book when I was, uh, you know, kind of new to sales because I knew that I didn't know the the small intricacies of what it took to be a good salesman. I don't want to be that slaps the hood of the car and says, "What's it going to take to get you in this Buick today?" Right? I, I'm not trying to be that guy. I was exactly. selling computers at the time. But one of the lessons that he taught that I feel like is my most, say, regurgitated lesson when somebody is on the subject, but I like to tell them about the four levels of understanding 
And it could be uh, understanding anything from sales to voice acting. And when you said that I need to get some coaching, that reminded me of, of basically level number two. Well, I'll start on level number one, but the first level of understanding is unconscious incompetence. Okay, you don't know and you don't know what you don't know. You don't even know the the, the questions to ask in order to know, right? Exactly. And then step number two or level number two is conscious incompetence. Like you still suck at it, but at least you know which questions to ask and how to get better. And then you go up to um, conscious competence. You would think that would be four, but it's actually number three. And it says that I know what I'm doing and I know how I got here. You know how to get better. And, you know, you know how to help those around you because you can now teach it. That's where you teach at. Well, and then the last level or the the ultimate level is maybe one that's inferior to the third level, but it's unconscious competence. And that's like, I know what I'm doing, but it just kind of comes natural to me. I don't really know how to tell you how I'm doing it. I'm just doing it. And if you're a baseball fan, which if you follow Slasher Sports at all, then you probably are. But it was the difference between Mickey Mantle and Ted Williams. Ted Williams uh, was was a conscious, competent guy, consciously competent guy, because whenever he would get into a slump, he could step back, examine, and then get back in the box and say, OK, I'm going to correct this. Whereas Mickey Mantle had to basically hit himself out of a slump because he really just his slumps lasted longer. And this is a this is a statistical fact. It's not, mm -hmm. you know, me being a Yankee hater, which I am. But um, <laughs> I'm not a Red Sox guy either, but um, but that's just, you know, something that you said, I have to find coaching. And when you started learning uh, which questions to ask yourself or to ask others, I'm sure your improvement jumped tenfold. So mm -hmm. what types of improvements did you see from I need to find coaching to I've now found coaching and I understand? Confidence. Oof. That was the thing when doing the coaching. It was always building on the confidence because when you take a script, you record something and you listen back like, oh, I don't like this. Oh, I don't like this. I don't like this. Get my confidence and say, you know what? I put in every, I put in what I got. All right. And it was also the confidence to say an, a fine four letter word that I love to say. And that's next, you know, all right, next that's done. You know, I audition, submit and forget it. So that was definitely one of the things building your confidence. And a good coach is going to teach you how to do that. Another one is script analysis, breaking down that script. Another one was don't be afraid of going left while everyone's going right. For instance, if you're reading a script, everyone eight out of 10 times is going to read a script the same way. If you can find a do it, if you can find a way to do it correctly and make it sound well by just changing a word or two. Maybe it's simple, something simple as adding a the or, hey, buddy, did you know? Instead of saying, did you know? Just something simple because people who listen to your auditions, they're listening to hundreds a day. So something to make them to stop and go, oh, hang on, play it back real quick. That's going to capture their attention. So those are the top three skills I learned uh, doing voiceover that made me go from coaching to be, okay, I think I'm ready to... Uh, dive in and learning and just breaking down uh one of the best things i learned uh i actually don't have it in my booth right now because i had to take it down is i have pictures of five people in my booth one's my wife one's my kids one's my best friends uh, my best friend one is the guy i hate with a passion and the other one is my mother and the reason being is when i talk to those people in real life i talk to them differently so whenever I read a script, I'm more so looking at that person and I say, oh, hey, did you know that? Yeah. You know what? Yeah, I know, mom. But so kind of I'm talking to different people. And by doing that, I'm going to pull a different emotion out when reading a script. Well, that is a method of all methods. <laughs> I like that, though. I like yeah, that a lot. It's a credit for that. It's definitely one of my coaches that gave me that advice. But it's such fruitful advice that I, I love and I want to share that. Because you're, you're going to pull out different emotions. 
I'm going to start doing that. I'm just going to paste people's faces on my computer screens. <laughs> <laughs> I like Maybe that. Yeah. It sounds like you get a lot of satisfaction from your work or, it, or is it just kind of a grind? It was, I guess sometimes it could be both. Um, and I, I, and I guess I'm asking because like, you know, an actor in film could, you know, easily get burnt out, you know, but at the same time, there's a variety of, you know, up and moving around. Do you ever feel like it's, it's a job and not, um, just a life's work? You know what? There's some days are better than others. Uh, lately, uh, since the pandemic, I actually went from doing commercials to video games and anime to e-learning kind of took over and commercial still, but in that field, I enjoy it, but it wasn't really my passion. So getting e-learning after e-learning and a special me medical narration, uh, I, I, I roll because it's just so many <laughs> terminology that I don't know. I'm like, what is that? Oh, that's common cold. Why don't just say comical? All right. I, and you have to act professional. But, you know, that kind of gets a little, shouldn't, not really boring, but a little um, tedious, if you will, a little tiresome. But in one way, I always remember, I kind of smack myself in the head and I say, hey, Momo, this is what you love to do. Like, you're actually, people are listening to your voice. You're the voice of authority that they're listening to in that slideshow or in that presentation you're going to capture them with your voice so get some passion behind there so especially um this is why i love video games so much to kind of because i remember when i was sitting there playing brave fencer musashi or devil may cry or uh other video games Mega Man, and just getting so enthralled in the character in the story thinking wow this is awesome like actually crying in metal gear solid 3 when you killed the main character uh, the boss or the female boss, I think her name was. I can't remember. Uh, no, it was the boss. Uh, was she the was the boss, boss right? first, and then uh, he, that he, title was given to, to Snake. Yeah. Thank it, you for coming. I'm so happy you're a Metal Gear fan, man. All right, rock. So, yeah, just uh, just kind of like, wow, that's really. And what really got me is hearing that recording of his lover speaking at it. And when she started to break that, I'm like, oh, wow, why am I kind of shedding a tear here? You know, just feeling that passion, the fact that I get to do that, that's that's incredible. So it, it's not so much, a, you know, it is a grind. It, it's never really worked because I'm bringing my passion to someone and I could take their already hard work that they put so much passion in and breathe some sort of different air into it, different life into it. And, and that is incredible to me. You know, random thought going back to Metal Gear Solid, David Hayter is probably one of the first uh, voiceover talents that I started to pay attention to and I actually follow his work. And uh, yeah, it, I think eventually they started using Kiefer Sutherland as yeah, the yeah. Snake, snake's voice and uh, maybe the fourth or fifth one. But David Hayter is, uh, he's Mount Rushmore material uh, yes. for voiceover in, in my opinion. But uh, let's talk about how somebody listening could could get started in voiceover. Like what is step number one? Absolutely. Step number one would definitely be get coaching. You should research different coaches. You can ask different peers and don't settle for one. Uh, and when it comes to coaching, uh, all coaches are going to tell you this, whatever field you want to get into, whether it's audiobooks, video games, uh, commercials, promo work, anime, character work, pick that. And also do commercial because eighty percent of the work you're going to get is going to be commercials. So pick, make that and com commercial, and pick a coach that's been in the industry for at the very least a decade, who's worked on several good projects, who is has several credible agents, and actually knows what they're talking about. Because especially now, I can't tell you how many frauds are out there, and they say. Oh yeah, I can coach. I uh, all right. Well, what's your background? Oh, I've done a uh, anime. All right. Well, what else have you done? Oh, that's it. Hang on a second. So you only done one? Okay. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm not gonna die for that. I mean, anime is great and everything, but I like to hear a little bit more. So that will be step one. Then, once you build up your repertoire, step two would definitely be then you can work on getting the equipment. 
And there's actually several places I go to to get equipment that's, I don't want to say for the cheap to make it sound bad, but for the cheap. Like this microphone I'm using, it's uh, one of the standards. It's the Sennheiser 416 shotgun. Goes for, I think, about 1000 to 1200 bucks. I got it for 400 bucks in a Facebook group because a guy had six of them and he was selling one. Because I, I don't need six. Another one is the Neumann Tillman 102. That goes for at least 1200 I bought that for six. Once again, the guy I bought it from had three. He said, I don't need three. Here you go. And we happened to work on a project together, but definitely network, network, network. Then you get the equipment. Then you want to worry about um, the space you're going to record in. Now, uh, starting off, what I did was I built a little PVC booth and I used moving blankets in it. And I had a carpeted rung and I also put little what's called base traps in the corner. And I actually made, uh, I recorded a lot of projects with that. Uh, believe it or not, there was one audiobook I did when I first started out uh, using a mic, uh, mic I had. I actually threw a blanket over me to record to kind of make the sound. I don't recommend that because it was summer and it, it was ungodly hot. <laughs> so, yep, then we do that. Then uh, once you have the equipment and once you get the coaching and you make your demos, make yourself a website. Host your demos on that website. You can do that uh, pretty cheap or for free. And then start, you know, submitting for agencies and start finding work. Voiceovers are everywhere. A lot of voiceover, even when you don't realize, when you call up a doctor's office, how many times you hear an automated message? Hi, right, thanks for calling so-and-so. We're really glad you gave a call. For uh, If you're a new customer, press 1. If you're a returning customer, press 2. So there's actually a lot of businesses around New Jersey. I provided uh, the on-hold messaging for that uh, podcast. Again, I do a lot of intros for various podcasts. Uh, you know, a lot of people who uh, also a lot of people who want to get into voiceover. It, it's I, I wanted to get into voiceover for this. It's to do anime, which is fun. Anime is great, but you want to kind of set your sights higher for that. Uh, one of the uh, projects I'm actually really proud of is a video game that I just uh the guy just finally published and uh, I really put my heart and soul into that. And I'm so proud. Everyone's like raving about his game and everything. And, and it really showed, you know, just how much work he put in and everyone's loving it. Sorry, I got off topic a little bit. <laughs> no, that, that is the topic. That is the topic. Um, are you able to say which game it is yet? Or is yes, it not called out? Imago Beyond the Darkness. Imago Beyond the Darkness. And you worked on that. Uh, I did all the, all the male voices. Uh, I did. So every time you hear uh, the two main uh, protagonists, Arthur and Marty, that's me. That's and there were, it was difficult because it was two completely different voice ranges. One was kind of low right here, and the other one was really high up here. And I had to go even higher and higher. So I actually had to work with a uh, an opera coach to kind of really make my voice go even higher than I could because I kind of have a, a you know like a youthful baritone voice if you will sometimes mm -hmm. sometimes i could talk a little higher so i had to work on that to really get the right octave when uh saying those lines so when you were re uh, recording that were you doing it like basically all in the same uh setting or did you record all of one character first and then the second character next sometimes it varied uh i would do uh all what all like small parts i would do Whenever it was the two main characters, I would do one after another. I would do, all right, this one, this one, this one. I uh, actually hired someone to help uh, edit my mistakes and everything because uh, it was very tedious. And then I realized that was kind of a little tedious. So I just did, all right, let me do all the all these characters' lines first. Then let me go back. But a lot of times uh, I, I love doing just one character, then jumping into the other one because it helped paint the scene. And then I would go back, delete that line, and then record that whole scene all over again because now that I know like what's going on and each one, each person's emotions, I was able to act it out well, or at least better. Or better. I mean, the continuous improvement is the name of the game. Exactly. So let's talk about people honing their craft and getting the proper coach. And are there are there any classes or books or programs that you would recommend to uh, the person trying to get into the industry? Absolutely. There's one uh, by a acquaintance of mine called uh, Joshua Alexander. He has several voiceover books. Uh, there's one by Rodney Salisbury. He has vocal warm-ups. That's another one. 
uh, classes, although I personally have never taken a class with him. I know Crispin Freeman offers classes. Richard Horvitz, Horvitz, I think that's his name, uh, who was Invader Zim. He offers classes. Uh, I have yet to take a class with him. Everett Oliver is another one. So there are some, I can't really say free. Um, probably the best one would be join the uh, Global Voice Acting Academy because they have a whole roster of coaches and they actually have classes where uh, they can, some are not free, but they are really affordable that mm -hmm. you can take and network with the different peers. Uh, I was there when it kind of first was starting. And every Monday, you can actually talk with uh, the co-founder and have, uh, for a good hour, he'll just answer your questions, hang out with them. It's called Cup of, Cup of Joe with Dave. And uh, just, I'm oh, sorry, Cup of Joe with David Rowe, it's called. So just hanging out and talk with him. He'll answer a few questions, tell you how you can get started. And that's a great course. And even there's so many uh, various YouTubes. Uh, Mike Delgado. Booth Junkie, he's a fantastic resource on YouTube. Sean Daly, an acquaintance of mine who uh, other also, he reviews products as well. He's wonderful. And uh, yeah, just look up those few people and you'll be able to find so many free courses to take and reduce price courses. Tell me the name of that academy again. Global Voice Acting Academy. Global Voice Acting Academy. That's uh, a link we're going to have in the episode bio along with your own uh, website. Of course, check out the episode bio to all our episodes because we definitely want to put everybody over who comes on here and gives us our time. But Chris, you know, uh, kind of a change of uh, change of pace here. You're, you're part of the Extra Life New Jersey branch where you stream to donate money to the children's hospitals. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. So I got started with that by uh, going to a convention. I've heard about them in the past. And when I saw them, I'm like, hey, you know, I, I want to hear about your organization. And, you know, being a father myself and uh, just I, I can't fathom, you know, children going through such a hardship, uh, being so young and having to, you know, spend their whole life in a hospital or spend their whole life in a doctor's office, just doing something as, you know, playing video games. I mean, I, that's one way I relax. I actually have to turn my brain off to relax and just enjoy some video games. So why not stream? Everyone streams it nowadays anyway and just earn some money for a good cause. Just give it to people who really need it. And, you know, uh, unfortunately, as of late, because just work is kind of overtaking my life at the moment. Well, I can't really say work. It's, it's a fun career. Uh, I just haven't had much time to stream, but that's just how I got involved with it. I went to a convention, I saw them, I asked about it, and they have a every, I believe every towards the holiday season, they have a 24 hour stream where they have various people do stream for 24 hours as they play. There was one I did um, that I'm going to do again. It's called uh, Play for Trevor, it's for supporting the uh, Trevor Project. And where I'm going to stream a few games, uh, I'm going to get a few of my buddies around to kind of do it for about 24 hours to stream and take all the proceeds to donate it towards uh, the Trevor Project. And how do we help out with that? Uh, just tune into the stream. More information is going to be coming. I'm probably going to start around uh, November, December. I know it's a little ways off, so I'm going to be making announcements on my TikTok, all my social media pages. And I just want, you know, people just to tune in uh, if they want to donate. Sure. If not, they're going to have some good laughs along the way because we're uh, a kooky bunch. We're probably going to be playing some video games, possibly some Dungeons and Dragons because I'm a huge Dungeons and Dragons nerd and uh, possibly streaming a few movies in that, too. Man, that sounds like a fun time. We're make sure we get everybody uh, uh, all the links that you need to get out in order to, for us to help out. And I also want to get you guys over to, um, the totally voiceovers.com. That's it was kind of difficult to, to read when it's all bunched together like that, but yeah, the totally voiceovers.com. That's uh, Chris's website. And you got a lot of good stuff on there and it's a really impressive resume. Uh, and before I let you go, man, I just do want to thank you very much for stopping by talking to me for a while it's been an absolute pleasure. And I, and I learned that that's the most important thing I learned. And I know our listeners are going to learn a little bit about your industry, how to get in and possibly find just 
a, a new line of interest. And, and that's, you know, the, of the utmost importance. So the link, again, will be in the bio to this episode. So please do check that out. Uh, Chris has a lot of good things going on. But until next time, slashersports.com, you know what to do. Choke up on the bat, stay alive, and make you drink the blood of your enemies from the skulls of their children.